What's up you guys? My name is Aubrey and this is my channel and today we're going to be talking about Turo and Get Around. And I'm going to be laying down the key differences between these two platforms. Now this is a question that I've actually gotten quite a lot over the last year and a half of my YouTube career and it's something that I didn't feel like I was informed enough to speak about because I haven't really ever done a whole lot of research on Get Around and the benefits of the platform. That is until recently. And recently I've been doing a lot of research on the platform. So in this video, I'm gonna be comparing these two platforms. I'm gonna be talking to you about which platform is best for which different circumstances. And I'm gonna be outlining some of my future plans for my own Turo fleet because big changes are coming. Now, if you guys are interested in car sharing and if you're interested in starting your own Turo or car sharing business, then make sure to stick around until the end of the video because at the end of the video, I will be giving a coupon code for my car sharing masterclass, which is a course that teaches you how to start your own car sharing business. So if you wanna get that coupon code, then stick around until the end of the video. So let's get started. Now, for those of you who don't know what car sharing is, car sharing is a business or a side gig where you share your vehicle or rent out your vehicle and you make money doing it. A lot of people do this with their personal cars, but there are also a lot of people out there that own a fleet of cars and they rent it out as a full-fledged business. This is something that I've been doing since 2017, and to be honest with you, this is something that has truly changed my life. I think that car sharing is one of the best side hustles that exist out there, and it's something that I've been a huge advocate for, for not only my entire car sharing career, but also my entire YouTube career as well. Now, I started car sharing back in 2017 with my 2011 Jeep Wrangler. I started it just as a side hustle, and then from there I scaled and expanded, and at my peak I owned 15 cars. Recently, in recent months, I've had cars that have gotten totaled and have sold a couple cars, and because of that, I'm sitting at about 10 cars in present day. But the goal is to get to 20 cars by the end of 2021. So there are a lot of expansion plans coming in the next couple of months. Now, whenever it comes to car sharing, there are kind of three key players in the game. We have Hire Car, which is the worst platform. I've never actually used it, but I've never really heard anything good about it. And then we have Get Around and we have Turo. Turo is the one that I have the most experience with because it's the only one that I've worked with personally. Get Around is one that is a pretty good competitor to Turo, but up until recently they weren't offered in the Dallas area and because of that I had never tried the platform before. Now when it comes to the differences between Get Around and Turo, they both complete the same similar function. They both facilitate the rentals of personal vehicles or the sharing of personal vehicles. And both platforms will allow for you to rent out your car and make money doing it. Both platforms offer some sort of insurance coverage for your vehicle while it's out on a rental, and both platforms facilitate the communication between the host, which is you, and the renter who's renting your car. But there are some very key differences between these two platforms, and depending on what you're wanting to accomplish with your car sharing business, one platform may be better than the other. Number one is accessibility. The growth plan and the kind of overall reach of both platforms is quite a bit different. Like I mentioned a few moments ago, Get Around up until recently wasn't offered in the Dallas area. They seem to be expanding throughout the world and throughout the country, city by city and state by state. This wasn't really the exact same approach that Turo had. Turo kind of expanded right into the United States all at once, and they did this quite a while ago. And so because of that, Turo has a lot more accessibility than Get Around. Turo is offered in most places in the United States, and it's even expanded into other countries around the world as well. Whereas Get Around's reach is quite a bit smaller, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it means that depending on where you're located, Get Around may not even be an option. Another big differentiator is the types of vehicles that you're allowed to rent. On Turo, your vehicle that you list has to be 12 years or newer, and it has to have less than 130,000 miles. You have to have the car rented before it hits these thresholds, or else the car is not eligible to rent. But if you rent it before it hits these thresholds, and then it crosses the line of being 12 years or older and 130,000 miles or more, it can get grandfathered into the Turo platform as long as it's being maintained well and that it is a safe vehicle to own. On the flip side, Get Around has quite a bit more leniency with the type of vehicles that you're allowed to list. On Get Around, you can rent a car that is a 2007 or newer that has under 200,000 miles. So the requirements are quite a bit more lax compared to Turo. Another key difference between these two platforms is the passiveness of the business model. 
With Turo, the vehicles have to be held to a bit of a higher standard. The vehicles need to be clean, they need to be disinfected, they need to be ready to be taken out because of the fact that many of Turo renters are using your car for vacation, for commutes, because of the fact that they need a vehicle. There is a higher standard as far as the cosmetic appearance, as well as the cleanliness and so much more when it comes to Turo. Because of this, you will oftentimes have to clean vehicles between each and every rental. You'll need to vacuum them, wipe them down, disinfect them. Sometimes you'll even have to take them to the car wash, which can not only be costly, but it can also be time consuming. In addition to the cleanliness, whenever it comes to a Turo rental, you have to check in and out the vehicle 24 hours before and after a trip ends. So for example, if you have a trip happening with your car, you need to make sure to go to that car and take photos of that car 24 hours before that car is picked up. If you don't do that, then you will not be covered by insurance. Then when the car is returned, you have to go inspect it 24 hours after, you have to take photos of it, and you have to see if the car is damaged at all within that 24 hour window. If that doesn't happen, then once again, you will not be covered under insurance. This isn't that big of a deal if you're somebody that has the ability to go to your cars multiple times a day or multiple times a week. For me, for example, I live very close to where my cars are stored, and so because of that, it is very easy to check on my cars multiple times a day if needed. But if you're somebody that has a nine to five job, if you're somebody who keeps your cars on an offsite lot, this can be very cumbersome and very difficult to deal with. Get around on the other hand is quite a bit more passive. You see with Turo, the burden of guilt, the burden of damage claims, the burden of proving that damage happened, as well as the burden of cleanliness of the vehicle, all of this responsibility is placed on the host, which means that the host is responsible for checking in the cars, making sure the car is covered by insurance, making the car is clean. All of these details, all of these facets of the business is on the responsibility of the host. Whereas with get around, this is actually the opposite. And all of these burdens are placed on the guest. You see with get around, you actually don't have to check in the car every 24 hours like you do with Turo. All you have to do is check it in once every week once every seven days and that is it. With get around, the guest is responsible for taking photos before and after the rental. The guest is responsible for cleaning the car after the rental. And the guest is responsible for making sure that the vehicle gets returned in the same condition that it was picked up in. If the guest doesn't do that, then they face a hefty fine. And because of this fine, it is very rare that guests don't do that. This means that in the case of an accident, in the case that a vehicle is trash, in the case that a vehicle is totaled, you, the host of a get around vehicle, will be covered even if you haven't seen that car in five days. As long as you check in the car once a week, you will be covered under the case of an accident, damage, or the car being trashed, which is a huge difference from Turo. And the last key difference between Turo and get around is the types of vehicles that they offer and really the use behind these cars. Turo's entire marketing shtick is the fact that you can rent cars that you can't own. You can drive your dream cars. You can drive cars like Lamborghinis, Audis, Mercedes, BMWs, and so much more. That is Turo's entire thing. Own the adventure. Have an adventure with a Turo vehicle. But the fact is not all people use Turo for that reason. I think that my guests are a testament to that. There are a lot of people out there that use Turo because of the fact that they need a car, because they need somewhere to get from point A to point B. But that's not the type of guests, and that's not the type of rentals that Turo likes to advertise themselves as. They like to advertise themselves as a platform that can facilitate your next adventure with a really cool car. Get Around, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. And they advertise themselves as a vehicle that you can use to get from point A to point B. They allow for you to rent a car and get around and then use that car for Uber, for Lyft, for DoorDash, for ride sharing. They allow for you to use that vehicle in the gig economy, which is a big, big difference from Turo, where Turo, that is actually banned and it's against the terms of service. Because of the difference in this messaging and this overall kind of tone, Turo owning the adventure, whereas Get Around is like the car sharing marketplace for the gig economy, there are big differences in the type of vehicles that you can rent and the type of standards that are held. With Turo, you are supposed to have your vehicles very clean, very well kept. You don't want dents, dings, or scratches. I would say that the types of vehicles that I have on Turo are not the types of vehicles that Turo really wants on the platform. They want really nice cars that people can have an adventure with, not very basic cars that people just use to go to the grocery store, which are the types of cars that I have. Get Around, on the other hand, their renters are using their cars for the gig economy. They're using their cars to commute, to get from point A to point B. They're using their cars to make some extra money. And because of that, the standards with Get Around cars are quite a bit lower. 
They don't have to be cleaned every rental. They're okay to have dents and dings. They are okay if they're a bit older with higher mileage, without the frills that come along with more modern cars. The standards are quite a bit lower because of how the vehicles are being used. Now, I'm not gonna sit here today and try to tell you which platform is better because of the fact that I've actually never used Get Around. The fact is, Get Around has not been available in Dallas until recently, and because of that, I've always just used Turo as the rental platform that I've listed my Turo fleet on. And I've had a really good experience overall with Turo. But the fact is, it's always good to diversify. And the fact that Turo has always been my only platform is always something that made me a bit uneasy because of the lack of diversification with my Turo fleet. And because of this, I was always a bit hesitant on growing past 15 cars. Because in the case that something happened to Turo or happened to my Turo account, I would be kind of screwed. But that is until recently. Now, the reason why I've done so much research on Get Around over the last couple of weeks is because of the fact that I was recently approached by a Get Around representative because of the fact that they are expanding to the Dallas Fort Worth area. And I was approached and asked if I would be interested in growing a Get Around fleet. After a really positive and productive conversation with their representative, I have decided to list a couple of cars on Get Around. And I will be dipping my toes into the world of Get Around to see how I like that marketplace and that platform. Now there are a few things that you should know and there's a few things that I would like to state on my expansion plans. Number one is the fact that with Turo, you actually have to list your cars exclusively on Turo, which means I can't have cars on both Turo and Get Around. Because of that, I will not be listing the cars that I currently have on Turo on Get Around. They will stay exclusively on Turo, and instead I will be buying cars that will be exclusively rented on Get Around. So they will be two separate fleets on the two separate platforms. Secondly is the fact that I actually plan on just dipping my feet into the Get Around world at first. I don't plan on buying a bunch of cars at one time. I'm gonna be starting with two cars, and both of the cars are ones that I've already purchased, and I will be doing a video on those in the coming days. Number three is I will most likely expand to five cars on the get around platform between now and the end of summer and then i will see how i like the get around platform how the damage claims process is how the overall passivity of the business is and how i like the platform and then from there i'll evaluate whether i want to continue expanding or not the goal is by the end of 2021 to have a 20 car fleet spread across these two platforms and as of right now i'm sitting at about 10 cars which means i'll have to buy 10 more between now and the end of the year now i'm really excited to give get around a try you know i've been really happy with Turo. This isn't a slight at all to Turo. It doesn't mean that I'm leaving Turo or that I'm not happy with Turo, but I just think it's important to diversify your income. And I think that it would be a mistake to at least not give Get Around a try and see how I like it. I will keep you guys updated on how I like the Get Around platform, what my expansion plans are with the platform, and I plan on documenting this entire process of going from 10 to 20 cars on this YouTube channel. So if you're interested in seeing that process and seeing what cars I'm buying, what my thought process is behind the purchases, then make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a single video. If you guys are interested in checking out my car sharing masterclass, then use the code GETAROUND in order to get $25 off of that purchase. And if you guys are interested in checking out Get Around, I do have a referral link with them and that will be down in the description below as well as in the comment section as well. So if you're interested in giving Get Around a try, use the referral link and you get a cool bonus and I get a bonus as well. So it is a win-win situation. But with that being said, you guys, I wanted to make this video because of the fact that I get this question a lot. I get the question of what my thoughts are on Get Around and whether or not it's a good platform to go with. And the fact is up until now, I didn't know the answer to that. So I'm very excited to explore the Get Around platform and to provide you guys with some more information on the experience and whether or not it's something I recommend doing. So stay tuned for more videos on Get Around and on my process of expanding my fleet. Now, with that being said, you guys, if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, then make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.